Hello, this is September 29th, 2020, and uh, this is Houston, Texas. Uh, as a matter of fact, there, there, there's a herd of cattle just roaring by outside now. It's, it's quite an impressive sight, but, well, uh, we don't want to get into that now. The camera's already mounted, or I'd show it to you. Uh, today I'd like to discuss the uh, number systems, uh, beginning with the most primal number system, consisting of scratches on a rock, and in sequence, with each number in the sequence increasing by one scratch. Now, uh, that could indicate sheep or grapes or bushels of wheat or whatever. Now, at some point you might wish to refer to one sheep out of a herd of two or three sheep out of a herd of four. And in that case, we have the primal fractions, one over two, two over three, two over four. Now, notice that one sheep out of a herd of two is not the same as two sheep out of a herd of four. So there's no cancellation in the primal number system. Then we have the natural number systems which developed from the concept which developed from the concept of digits 0, 1, 2, and I haven't shown the last one because you had you can have for a, a natural number system, you can have any number of digits, 3, 4, 5, etc. K. Uh, then in this system, we have fractions m over n less than 1, where m and n are integers, n unequal to 0, and they divide into rational, where the numerator and denominator are finite, and the irrational, where the numerator and or the denominator are infinite. Uh, I'm, it, it helps if I talk to my wife, because it's, uh, <laughs> this is something, someone to talk to. Her. Well, uh, okay. Then we have, from there, from there, we have what the common number system used today, which is the decimal number system, all right? And the decimal number system has integers 0, 1, 2, 9, 10, and the digits based on these numbers are 0, 1, 2, and 9. Then you go to 10 with a base of 10, 11, 12, etc. We also have fractions m over n less than 1, n unequal to 0, and those fractions are also rational or irrational, depending on whether the numerator and denominator are finite or infinite. Then we have a new quantity called a decimal fraction, which is, defi which is defined by m over n is equal to some integer over 10 to the r, another integer. So what you're essentially doing is expressing all fractions as a ratio of some number to a power of 10. For example, 0.125 is 125 Q over 1000, which is 10 cubed, and that's equal to 1 eighth. Now, we also have rational decimal fractions and irrational decimal fractions. And again, the rational decimal fractions are finite. They have a finite number of digits, and the irrational decimal fractions are infinite, and they have an infinite number of digits, and they, the, 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 the irrational ones generally are those fractions which can't be expressed as a, ratio, as a finite ratio of integers. Now, in order to deal with infinite irrational fractions, we introduced a concept and a new number, which is the limit of an infinite decimal fraction. For example, 0.333 is never equal to one-third, and 0.999 is never equal to one, no matter how many digits you use in the 333 or the 999. However, uh, 0.999 never belongs, never belongs to the, oh, oh, I'm sorry, 0.999, no matter how many digits you have, 0.999 always belongs to the interval zero, one, the open interval on the right, and one never belongs to the interval zero, the same interval. So that's a major, a major distinction between the, the infinite endless string and the, the limit of that endless string. So the real numbers in summary then consist of integers plus fractions plus decimal fractions and limits. For example, one, one and a quarter, 0.333 endlessly, uh, 0.14159, one third pi, etc. Now, all fractions can be displayed 
on a graph in the following manner. I'm going to have I'm going to create a grid, and the denominator is going to be plotted on the x-axis. The numerator is going to be plotted on the y-axis, and any fraction then will be some point on this grid less than the line m equal n. All right, so two-thirds, for example, has a denominator of three and a numerator of two. So there's the, there's the fraction two-thirds. And I note that the, the denominators and the numerators both can go to infinity. So all fractions, all fractions are on this graph. Now, the interesting part about this graph is that it enables you to count all fractions, all of them. So for example, so I'll start I can, in, in the following manner. If I start off at this point here and go to the point one down here, denominator one, numerator zero, I'll count one, two, three. I'll go to this point, I won't count it because it's numerator and denominator equal one. Go over here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Won't count this one, so I'll go over here, 11, 12, and, and so on. So every, every fraction is on this graph, and you can count every fraction plotted on this graph. So all the fractions can be counted, but in addition, we have limits of, of irrational fractions to count, but limits of most irrational, uh, uh, of most, uh, of most, what's that word? Oh, oh, limits at most, doubles. doubles, doubles the word, I'm sorry. Limits at most, that's my writing, limits at most, thanks mother, limits at most doubles the number of fractions. Therefore, the final conclusion is the real numbers are countable. Now, someone may object that there is a diagonal process which disproves countability. However, I'd like to point out that the diagonal process creates a number which is at the end of an infinite list. But an infinite list doesn't have a last number or an end, so that number doesn't exist. To say it again, the, 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 inf the diagonal process creates a number which is at the end of an endless list, which doesn't have an end. So the number doesn't exist. Thank you.